for better or worse, as iOS developers, we're kind of stuck using Xcode for the most part. So I thought it'd be a good idea to share some of the shortcuts and changes to keybinds I've done to make my life a little bit easier when using Xcode. <laughs> So before I get started talking about the actual keybinds and everything that I've changed with an Xcode, which isn't that much, but just a couple things to make my life easier, I thought I'd share a little bit the idea behind the keybinds and the shortcuts that I use and why I actually use them. I kind of believe that to be the most efficient and to have the least amount of issues with ergonomics and things like that when programming for the whole day and working on the computer for the whole day, one of the things that really helped me is keeping as many things as close to the home row as possible. So if you're like me and kind of interested in keeping things as close to the home row as possible when typing so that you feel a little bit more efficient, one of the things you probably thought about is about using Vim, which is unfortunately a little bit difficult to do when working on iOS projects. There are projects um, that are worked on as it is to have it work on different editors so that it works with Swift but it doesn't yet have support for actually using iOS APIs and things like that to work on iOS specific projects. Now, one of the alternatives to that is to use something called XVim2, which is a, an extension project that works on top of Xcode to you know, add some, if not most, of the Vim functionalities to Xcode directly. Now, as you can see, when I open that uh, GitHub page, one of the reasons why I don't personally use XVim, even though I have for a little while before, is because it comes with the fact that you have to re-sign your Xcode with your own certificate, which for the most part is fine, but I kind of hate having to redo that every time there's an update. And, and if for whatever reason there is ever security issues with signing your own Xcode certificate, then by using XVim, I feel like I'd kind of have to keep on top of that stuff and I don't really want to have to think about it. Um, if I can forget about my editor as much as possible, that's best for me. And so unfortunately, as much as I like the process, as long as it's not something that's supported directly by Xcode and Apple as um, kind of integrated um, extensions, I don't think I'll be using it. But it's an option for you if you want to use something like that actually realize that a lot of the keybinds and things like that that I still use in Xcode are things that are kind of legacy from having used XVim. Um, they work really well with XVim to make sure that you never have to leave the home row for anything. So you might get that sense a little bit of why I use them. But you'll see that even if you don't use XVim and you just use the arrow keys or whatever for your you know, text navigation, having those keybinds and things like that are still kind of useful to um, make my life easier when editing code. All right, so let's actually jump into it and look at some of the few things that I actually do to make my life easier within Xcode. The first one being actually outside of Xcode and into my system preferences. Um, as I said, I've rebound a couple of things within Xcode and one of the easy way to rebind things in Xcode where it doesn't affect your life too much and doesn't unbind too many things is to use control binds. And for that, I have been uh, remapping my uh, control key uh, to caps lock so that uh, my control key is a little bit more accessible and easier to use to actually use those key binds that I've rebounded. So now that that's set in place, let's look at some of the keybinds that I mostly use um, for Xcode. If you've ever used Xcode at all, for the most part, you probably know some of the basics one that I'm gonna be talking about, but I'm still gonna go over them in case you're a little bit more of a new user and you might not know some of the basic ones. Um, the first one that it's probably the most useful is uh, Command Shift O, which will just open a search bar to go search for another file that you can open rather quickly. Um, just jump to another view controller or to another view controller like that or another file. Um, it's most of my direct navigation is done like that. Um, like I said, I don't like using the mouse, so that's probably the fastest way to just be able to jump between files. To go along with that, there's one thing that's really useful in um, Xcode and it's the ability to be able to go back and forward 
where you had uh, previously jumped. So for example, if you have been using Control shift o to jump between files, you can after use those two arrows to jump between those two files and back and forward that way. What I've done to allow myself to use those features without having to actually take my hands off the home row is rebind them to Control h and to Control l So that way I can jump to a new file, notifications, and then Control h to go back, and if I need to go back to the other file, Control l to go forward. Like I said, that way I don't have to take my hands off the home row. Now it's also interesting to look at the fact that those arrows and those keybinds that allow you to jump forward and back can also be used within the same file if you've made a jump to somewhere else within that file. So here another keybind that's interesting, if I have um, a function right here, I can jump to the definition of that function by using command control J. So I'm here at the definition of function, and if I want to go back to where I was before, the back arrows and the back keybind still work to go back to where we were. So alongside with using Control shift o to be able to jump between files, one of the things that you'll see me do in here is so that I don't have to take my hands off the keyboard, I've actually rebound um, up and down on Xcode to use um, Control j and Control k so after I've used um, the search feature with Command Shift O, I can then use Control K and Control J to cycle through them and find what I actually need to open. To rebind this, you simply go within your Xcode preferences and the key binding section and search for move up and move down. And within there, you can, like you see, add Control K and Control J. Like I said earlier, this kind of emulates the uh, Vim key bounds, if you're used to that at all. What's also nice about having that shortcut rebounded to your home row is that when you're actually typing code and you have your auto completion giving you some um, options, you can cycle through them with the same key bind and find what you actually need without the need to take your hands off the home row. So it all kind of works together and as you can see it's all been using that same home row and those modifiers that are now easily accessible because we rebound the control key. Now let's touch on one last thing uh, that I use for navigation a lot and that's the ability to use um, second editor windows. So this all works nicely when you're within one window but obviously as you're programming you'll sometimes want to use and open files um, side by side so that you can compare stuff, move stuff over, etc. So within those last releases of Xcode, what you can do to do that is command control T, which will open a second vertical window. So like this, you can open a couple vertical windows at a very simple keybind and be able to have a couple files open at the same time. Once you have a couple of editors open like this, you can actually um, cycle through them using your control tilde key. If you have a couple like this and cycling is annoying, you can also use control J to move the focus to a different editor using your arrow keys. Um, but for the most case, there is usually not that many um, editors open. So just having the control tilde key makes it easy to just jump back and forth between both. Um, one of the simple keybinds that I've also added to manage opening different editors is a simpler one to just uh, close editors. Um, as it is in Xcode, it's a really, really uh, a heavy keybind with like three modifiers and so, or something, so it's kind of useless. Um, and so I've rebound closing the focused editor to uh, Control X which again kind of emulates a bit of um, Vim mindset and keybind. So that's where it's really easy to just open editors with a command control T, search for a new file, maybe and cycle through them, maybe go to the app icon selection view controller, go there, find for what I need in there, and then close it when I don't need it anymore. All in all, it's not that many shortcuts to learn to have navigation that's really simple and that doesn't need the mouse or the arrows that much to work. Um, it requires very few rebinding of keys. Uh, like I said, I have Control X bound to closing the focused editor, I have Control L bound to go forward, Control H bound to go back, and Control K and Control J bound to go up or down. Um, 
beyond that you can just you know change whatever you need to fit your need but that are the basic uh, bindings that i personally change to make things easier and a little bit more ergonomic for me so anyway i hope that was a useful bit of information um remember if you're a beginner programmer um learn those slowly they will kind of up your productivity and make it so you don't have to fight so much with the editor when trying to do stuff um, obviously programming is a lot more of mental work and just trying to figure out problems um, and a lot of time you're going to be spent you know laid back in your chair not writing that much code and at that point it's totally fine to use your mouse to move around and try to understand what's happening within your code but as you're actually sitting down and writing bigger chunks of code, sometimes it's worth putting a little bit of effort into making things feel a little bit more seamless so you don't kind of, you know, fight against the editor while you're actually trying to write code. I'm obviously not saying that you can never use the mouse or anything like that, but, you know, having a couple of the most useful keybinds memorized and ingrained within your brain will make it just a little bit more enjoyable to write code and to work on your projects as a whole. Anyway, I hope that was useful. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button down below. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit subscribe and ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I post a video. I also have a Patreon channel where I post all the videos that I make in early access before they are posted to YouTube and where you can have a bunch of other little perks if you decide to support me that way. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all next week. Until then, take care.